welcome back to Keto Homestead with Jess. Today we're going to do a June garden tour and give you a little update of how the garden is doing. So come along with me and we'll see what's growing. In this first row we have shallots. Second row is kale. And then we have some Swiss chard. Let me walk down here. We have tomatoes, tons and tons of tomatoes. We have some butter crunch lettuce. And then down here I have some kohlrabi, Swiss chard, and another row of Swiss chard. Let's go from this angle. And we have all of my tomatoes here. These are the indeterminate tomatoes. On our first trellis, I have some tiger melon on the outside. On the inside is spinach. It's going to seed. On this side I have some more spinach and on the outside I have some crane melon. And then if you look down this way we just walk these aisles. I have a couple tomatoes here and there. Here we have cucumbers. On the second trellis, we have sugar baby watermelon and arugula. It is also going to seed. And then on the other side of the trellis, we have all my determinate tomatoes. And then if you come to the middle, these are mostly. Half of them are indeterminate on this side, and then you go down here and it's determinate. In the middle, we have some purple Sicily cabbage. And the tomatoes come all the way down to the second trellis on both sides. And beside each tomato, I have basil. This would be our third trellis, and of course we have the arugula going to seed, and we have some cantaloupe on this trellis, and then on that other side of the trellis, you can barely see it, there is a bitter melon. We're trying bitter melon this year, and then it goes in to some more cabbage. We've got cabbage there. Let's go to the fourth trellis. I've got vari different varieties of flowers in these dugout spots. I'm not sure what I planted where now, but I'll let you know. Here we have my patty pan squash. Some more flowers that we planted. So the patty pan squash is on one side, and on this side I have some more lettuce. And then, I don't remember what I planted here. We have another type of melon, and it looks like, oh, there's my tag. Let's see. Okay, this is the Santa Claus melon that I was telling you about. <clears throat> the Santa Claus melon is awesome. It's a watermelon, but the reason they call it a Santa Claus melon is it lasts all the way into December. So you can store it up until December, which is awesome. I'm turned around to the fence line here, and all along here are my tomatillos. And then we have the very first one here is the blueberry cherry tomato. And then, I believe, 
These are, I'm not sure. I'm going to have to check the tag too. Okay, these are the Chadwick cherries, the ones in the middle. And then another blueberry cherry on the end. Here we have, I believe this is the OS cross cabbage. This is a Alaskan cabbage. I'm trying for the first time this year. And then we go into my peppers. Here are the sweet peppers. I have orange pepper. I've got autumn bell pepper. So we have all the peppers. There's the cabbage I showed you a moment ago. We have some more flowers planted there. And then we have a row of kidney bean. They're growing really nice. And then we go into, what is this over here? We've got the chives. This is a whole row of chives. Go down. And this over here. This is another variety of cabbage. I'll have to, oh, here's a tag. Let's see. Oh, no, this is not cabbage. I am sorry. This is the cauliflower. This is snowball cauliflower. And then my next row is okra. This is go big okra. We grew this last year and it did pretty good, but this year, not so well. And then we have a row of soup beans. On this first panel, we have some spinach. I need to get that harvest before it starts going to seed. And then we have, what melon is this? This is a honeydew orange melon. All right, now right in the middle of the cauliflower, lettuce, and okra, I have bee balm. And it's getting ready to flower. So here's the lettuce I've been telling you guys about. It's a romaine lettuce. It's doing awesome. And then here's the second variety of okra I am doing. And it is by far passing the Go Big Okra. Some more flowers. And let's see. This is French Quarter Pink Okra. And like I said, it is way so surpassing that Go Big. We've got a row of kale right next to the chives. And then again, the soup beans come through here. And on this trellis, we have some more arugula going to seed. And what do we have down here? We have the coho melon. And only one of those survived, but at least one survived. And then we have some Cosmo flowers. The Cosmos are doing pretty good. And I believe I put marigolds here. I'm not sure. I'll have to see when it comes up. Here are my Brussels sprouts. They're not happy right now. Brussels sprouts are a cold weather crop. I didn't get them out early enough. Um, my mistake. So they are not very happy right now. And then I have my onions. They're doing nice. On the other side of this panel, I didn't show you, but here, this is mustard seed. And this is the yellow variety. So I can have my own mustard seed. I can make my own mustard 
or I could do my own canning spice with the mustard seed. I've got some romace broccoli. I know I butcher that every time I say it, my apologies. But I have some broccoli here. Down at the other end is another variety of Brussels sprouts. Now these ones look a little better than the ones at the other end. These ones are holding up a little more. And then I have a little herb section down here in the garden. We have the purple, or no, this is a white cone flower. We have the toothache plant, which is one of my favorite herbs, along with the stevia. I've got two stevias down here. Here we have some winter savory. And this last one, we have some Texas tarragon. And it started to die, but it's coming back. So I'm really happy about that. What did I miss? There was something else I missed over here. Let's go back. Because I forgot to show you. We have the lovage here. And I was like super sad because it completely died out. It was beautiful, lush looking, and it completely died out. I mean, there was nothing, no green or anything left to it. So I thought it was done. And look at this. It's like it came back and flourished. I'm super happy. And the reason I'm super happy is Lovage is a substitute you can use instead of celery. And I have tried for years, and I have a super hard time growing celery and being successful. So lovage, I can use and replace that. Here in front of me, I have a cucamelon. Actually, two cucamelons. And then I have one of my current cherry tomatoes. They go crazy. There's a second one. And then we've got a couple more cucamelons. I gotta get down here and weed some of this. And then here we have some pineapple tomatillos. The ones earlier I showed you are the grand green tomatillo or tomatillos. And like I said, these are the purple, or not the purple, the pineapple. Nice. Here we have, let's see, one, two, one, two, three, four, four rows of green beans, and then down at the end we have two wax bean rows. I'm going to have to walk down here because I missed a spot. We have some broccoli that has went to seed. It has bolted, it's fine. I'll get tons of broccoli seed. And I'll have to plant that earlier next year. Lessons learned. And then here we have my hot peppers. We don't eat a lot of hot peppers, so I don't need a lot. So here are two, oh well, I guess it's a, a half a row all together. There's Nine survived, and one, two, three, four, five have died. Not too bad. And then on the outer side, I'm going to be planting some, on the outer side of this fence all the way down, I will plant some zinnias, which is one of my favorite flowers for the garden. I do have a couple marigolds in here right now but we'll add some zinnias give some beauty to the garden then we have the yellow summer squash we've got two rows of sweet corn 
Here's another yellow summer squash. And another one. We've got three rows of sweet corn. Because here's the other one. I put the I put the squashes in between the corn rows this year. Another summer squash. Okay, so I have four summer squashes. I was trying to see if I could find the tag. I'm trying to remember. This was a new variety of squash to me that I wanted to plant this year. And super excited about and I cannot for the life of me think of the name of it right now so I'll have to let you know but I have three of these and then I have four zucchinis they're coming on nicely they're starting to produce they got little baby zucchinis on there Ooh, this one's a little good size, I think. I'll take that. I'll take it in, and I'm going to eat that for lunch today. Nice little baby zucchini. And then my last, my fourth zucchini. Down here, I have some lemongrass. And I'm not going to walk these rows because I planted them super close for a reason. <coughs> I have here on the outside is the mammoth sunflowers. Right here. And these. The, the second row is the black sunflower oil seeds. And then it's really hard to tell because we need to get some weeding and some grass in here. Let's see. It's hard to see from this angle. Let's go down. We'll go down to the other end. Here you can see it. Let's zoom it in. We've got, right there, some celery. So I've planted two rows of celery in between the sunflower, hoping to give them some shade so that they grow and retain lots of water. It takes lots and lots of water. So we'll see how that grows. And on the back side of this panel, fencing, we have the Chinese long bean. They grow up to, I believe, a foot long. I'll try to show you the size of this garden. You see Barrett sitting way down there. I'll go walk the other end so you can see from that end of it. I think it looks really good this year. Super excited about this garden. Here is our old garden spot, and we were not going to plant in this area, but we ran out of space, and we went ahead and planted anyway. So in this crazy area, you see the flowers over here. These are all the radishes that I let go to seed. I have a row of turnips and beets, actually two rows of beets in this grassy area. And then Barrett has planted his peanuts. And we have our sweet potatoes in here. There is the strawberry bed that Barrett built. He moved the strawberries from he moved the strawberries from the fence he built up front and moved all the strawberries down here. They were dying out, so we moved them all down here. And this little patch way back there, that is where all my acorn squashes and spaghetti squash. I forgot to show this. It's hard to see, I know. But behind the strawberry beds, where the green is right there, that's all the field corn that we planted this year. And then the peas are right about there. 
Here we have my elderberry trees. This one is dying out. It doesn't look very nice, but there's starts all around the bottom here. So we'll have more elderberry trees, but all these are elderberry. They're doing good. Here we have my bush cherry tree. See if you can, nope, I gotta pan back around. Here we have our horseradish, it's growing. Right there, that little bush is a goju berry. Where Barra is, he's trimming. Those are all my blackberries. Here are my raspberries. They definitely need weeded. I weeded them once this year and they went crazy with weeds again. All right, I said I would show you the garden from this end. This is the end that I began recording in. So yeah, nice size garden. Show you this. We've got the kiwi trees or bushes. This is my kiwi. It's grown so much this spring so far. Cross your fingers we'll get kiwis this year. They've been in the ground for a few years now as well. Here is the second one. And then all that asparagus you guys see me harvesting. Here is my asparagus patch and it has went crazy. It went to seed. Let's walk over here. There's the pool. The pool is finally full. Here is the infamous grapevine. This is the vine Alberta started many, many, many years ago. And I told you guys I ripped out that old fencing. They just had regular fence and a couple T-posts. And I ripped it out and put up cattle panels instead. Let me tell you. It is super happy. I got to get in here and weed and put some grass down, but it has went nuts. There's a total of three cattle panels so far and it's still reaching. So I suspect by next year we'll have to put at least another one, maybe even two. A little backstory on this grapevine, it has survived so many things flooding we got goats one year and they came in and they ate that grapevine all the way down to nothing to nubble and it has survived and came back and just taken over again i can't imagine if the goats hadn't take down that grapevine where it would be today it would be massive this is a hydrangea nothing happening with it yet and then over here by the pool a little ways this is our shaded seeded spot <laughs> no but here is my new grapevine I just planted this I believe the year before last so it's been here almost two years and this vine this grapevine is amazing it's a green grape I don't know the variety Super sweet. I love coming out here and picking the grapes and eating those in the summertime. Beautiful. All right, I want to thank you so much for visiting Keto Homestead with Jess and visiting my garden and my berry garden with me. And until next time, stay happy, healthy, and safe. Bye.